Okay, let's uh, get this started. Hello, everybody. I'm Rossella Splendido. In SUSE, I lead the, the team that takes care of SDN and NFV. And I was a core reviewer for Neutron a few years ago. Today with me, Michal. Yeah, I'm Michal Rostecki. I work as a software engineer at SUSE. Nowadays, I'm mostly working on Cilium projects, but I used to also be active in OpenStack Cola some years ago. And today, we are going uh, to tell you about uh, improving security in your container infrastructure on the stack using Cur and Cilium, and about our plans to integrate those technologies and a little experiment we did nowadays to prove that there is a good path to try. Uh, and we will start our uh, presentation from explaining what is BPF filter. Are you familiar with it? Who knows BPF and eBPF? Okay, so um, BPF is Berkeley Packet Filter, and this uh, mechanism in kernel by which you can run programs on the Vintua machine inside kernel, and those programs can monitor Cisco's and they can monitor and filter packets. And in uh, our case, in case of our presentation, BPF is used mostly for uh, filtering out packets based on rules we defined before. And BPF is a very programmatic, very general. You need to write a source code in C, uh, and then by LLVM and CLANG compile it to bytecode, which, is, uh, which can be uh, loaded by the kernel by its JIT and verifier. And then after um, getting the program via JIT, it's running in the kernel virtual machine. And um, uh, Cilium is a project which uh, uh, brings BPF to containers. So uh, Cilium has several components. The biggest of them is the Cilium agent, which is running on, the, on each node and it translates rules regarding some container or some network namespace to a BPF program, which filters traffic especially for, uh, for some container. Uh, so, uh, and Cilium also provides a CLI for the user to define those rules. And there is also an integration with Kubernetes. And Kubernetes has a concept of network policies by which you can define uh, which IP addresses or uh, which uh, labels or which namespaces can connect with each other. So uh, Cilium has a functionality of watching your Kubernetes cluster and translating network policies into BPF programs. Uh, Cilium uh, as a project uh, started in the times when kernel still didn't have uh, a defined path to start replacing IP tables with BPF. But nowadays, there is an initiative inside, uh, in kernel called BP filter, which aims to be an alternative both for IP tables and NF tables, and uh, replace all firewalling stack in kernel uh, with uh, BPF programs. But Cilium started earlier, and it's fully ready and uh, usable solution to uh, bring security to your containers by BPF programs instead of using IP tables. So how many of you have heard about Cilium before? OK. That's good. So I will try not to scare you with this microphone. The volume is pretty high. Um, so let's uh, now introduce the other component of this integration, that it's a uh, career. Um, actually, the, the idea for this talk uh, came out during a uh, team brainstorming. You know, Michal has been contributing to Cilium for a while, and the rest of the team is pretty familiar with OpenStack. Um, so we just thought it would be great uh, to use um, the power of Cilium in OpenStack. How can we actually do that? And then we thought, okay, we can try with career. So we'll just explain you today how we did that and, uh, yeah, the future work that still we need to do. So going back to career, um, let's take uh, an historical perspective. Um, many of you might remember uh, a few years ago, like, containers uh, were not as popular as they are now. And, you know, OpenStack has been great in uh, dealing with VMs and their metal. 
but um, yeah, containers were a kind of new thing. So there, was, um, there wasn't a unified infrastructure to be able to connect VMs and container. So one of the earliest solutions to do that was uh, the approach that Magnum took. So basically to run a container inside a VM, um, which you know, gets the job done, but it's not optimal. Um, because you know, some SDN solution, they are, they are already native for container, containers, and you lose that when you run them in a VM. And uh, the other drawback is that, you know, um, like in Neutron, we already use uh, tunneling to take care of the network isolation. And most uh, container net networking solutions are also using tunneling, like for example, Flannel. So you ended up having a double tunneling, like the neutron tunneling, and then inside that, the tunneling by flannel, for example. And we'll see in the next slides how Career avoids that. Oh, no, go back. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, say a few words about the main components of Career. Uh, so we have the Career controller that runs on the node where uh, the Kubernetes API is running. And its main task um, is basically to watch for every CRUD operation that it's performed through the API and uh, taking care then of creating the corresponding neutron resources. Like for example, you create a pod in Kubernetes and then the career controller will make sure of creating the corresponding neutron port. Um, the other important task is that it will then annotate it, the Kubernetes resources with the neutron information. And this is done because the other component, the career CNI, which I think it's outdated now, it's the CNI daemon. Um, this component will, will be in the, on the worker node, so where Kubelet is running, and it will watch for annotation on the resources. So when it sees a new one, it will then perform the interface plugging. And we'll see in the next slides how that works. Thanks. So in the graph here, I put two containers. They are on different networks, the blue one and the red one. And they are running on the same VM. So how do we achieve uh, the network isolation using Courier? So Courier is um, utilizing um, the trunk port, which is a relatively new concept in Neutron. It was introduced two years ago, uh, to be able to get target traffic up to the VM. Because before that, it was not possible to get tag traffic up to the VM. So using the trunk port, you define the trunk port, and then you can define several subports. And every subport is associated with a specific VLAN. So in the case of Courier, um, so in the network topology, we have the BRINT, which is uh, you know, the usual neutron bridge that takes care of you know, tagging and un untagging the traffic according to the network. Then we have the trunk bridge, which is uh, the bridge created by neutron to represent the trunk port. On that uh, trunk port, um, Courier will create two different subports, one to take care of the traffic of network one, and the, and the other one for network two, and they will use different VLANs. So what happens when the, when the packet goes through the trunk bridge and exits one of the subports, it will be tagged correctly, and it will uh, then reach the VM tagged, and it will be delivered to the proper container. So uh, why are you trying to integrate Serium with Cur? Uh, first reason is that we uh, would like to bring uh, support for network policies. Um, currently, Cur has support for network policies, but uh, it's uh, using mapping for security groups, and uh, we think that uh, trying out uh, uh, integrating with Cilium, which will uh, filter out the packets uh, on the host or VM where containers are by BPF programs is an interesting uh, uh, idea to uh, try out. Uh, and so we did some experiments. Uh, uh, and in this experiment, uh, Cure Kubernetes controller is running as a deployment. We didn't use Cure Kubernetes CNI or CNI daemon 
but instead we uh, rewrote uh, uh, all functionality which uh, Cure Kubernetes CNI is using to Cilium CNI plugin. Uh, and uh, in Cilium we use the direct routing mode, so we told Cilium not to uh, take care of uh, uh, transitioning the packets between nodes. Why uh, we did it like that? Because, of course, um, copying functionality from Cure Kubernetes CNI to Cilium CNI doesn't sound good, but at the time we tried this experiment, uh, Cilium uh, was pretty monolithic, and it still is, but in the next version it will change. Uh, so Cilium CNI takes care of uh, uh, IPAM and uh, uh, creating the network and then creating uh, an endpoint and uh, uh, taking care of uh, generating BPF programs for that IP address. And we had some challenges with that approach. Uh, yeah, we needed to, uh, in, inside Cilium CNI plugin, uh, read the information which Cure saves in the annotation about networking and uh, create open switch VIFs. Uh, and uh, the schema uh, of uh, how the uh, whole solution works looks like that. So when user is creating a pod, uh, it gets created in Kubernetes API as an object. Kubelet is creating sandbox uh, and then calls the CNI plugin to uh, set up a uh, network namespace. At the same time, Cure controller, which observes uh, objects created in Kubernetes, requests the port creation for the pods. Then uh, Neutron is called, and uh, Neutron creates a port. And then Cure controller gets the information about that Neutron port and uh, saves uh, those data inside uh, pod annotations in Kubernetes API. And that's how, uh, at the end, CNI plugin is aware of all the networking configuration. But uh, I mentioned that um, uh, monolithism of Cilium is going to change. It will happen in version 1.4, which uh, will be the next version. The idea is to couple uh, Cilium into three layers, networking, load balancing, and policy, um, and make it able to use only some bits of Cilium. Uh, so uh, Cilium will allow to use any other solution for providing the networking and will allow to provide even just load balancing or just security policies on top of that. Uh, there is also an ongoing work uh, in Cilium to um, use that kind of decoupling for Cilium Flano integration, because there are a lot of people who are using Flano uh, in their Kubernetes clusters, and they would prefer rather to uh, use only those parts of Cilium which deal with network policies instead of replacing the whole network stack in their cluster. And uh, after that the coupling is done in Cilium, that will be a perfect opportunity to implement also Cure support uh, upstream. And in clean way, which should look like that. So the mechanism of creating pod and how Cure controller talks with Neutron stays the same. But then Cure CNI would take care of um, uh, creating VIFs and reading neutron data, and then Cilium on top of that, getting the data about uh, what IP address was assigned by uh, uh, Curacy and I, will be able to create uh, um, BPF programs for free filtering packets and observe uh, the Kubernetes API for network policies. And uh, now Rosella will talk about uh, packet transfer show. Yeah, it's the same graph with the, some modification. So just to get you a visual understanding of uh, what's different when using Cilium. Um, so as I was saying a few minutes ago, uh, with Vanilla Courier, basically the packet traversal is, you know, let's say the container is trying to send a packet outside. Then, you know, from the container, the TCP packet will be created. It will go through the virtual interface. It will go to the trunk bridge. It will go through the subport, will be tagged. 
uh, it will go to the integration bridge, and at that point, it will be filtered, like either using IP tables or the obvious firewall. If you're using Cilium, um, then as Michal was explaining, um, you have this BPF program that it's hooked in the kernel. So when the container issues a syscall, so let's say a connect, uh, that program will be executed immediately. So you see that we are jumping a few steps. And the other advantage is that uh, the BPF program is much more flexible compared to IP tables, for example. And uh, it's also extensible, like you can basically uh, stitch a few programs together. And then you could also make use of X XDP to you know, increase the performance further. And that, uh, this is the time for demo. Uh, in our demo, we have Kubernetes applications which simulate uh, uh, Star Wars, the station, Death Star, and Starfighters, TIE Fighter, and X-Wing. And uh, um, those uh, TIE Fighter and X-Wing will run as, a po as pods in Kubernetes. We'll uh, label them accordingly to make it uh, clear that TIE Fighter is an Empire Starfighter and X-Wing is Alliance Starfighter. And uh, from those pods, we will try to use Death Star API to land the ship. Uh, and uh, Cilium will take care of preventing Alliance uh, Starfighters in landing uh, on Death Star. Uh, so, this is the, um, the um, installation on DevStack. We have installed DevStack with Courier and Kubernetes which is running uh, along, so um, that Kubernetes installation should be considered like bare metal installation, but uh, using OpenStack. So we created pods. We are waiting for those pods to be created. Is that font size good for you? Okay, X-Wing is running, Death Star is running, uh, TIE Fighter is running. And all of those pods have IP addresses uh, assigned, and we will check now whether each of them has a corresponding neutron port. So first we are checking whether there is a neutron port for a uh, Death Star pod, and as we can see, we have such a port. Now let's check the Starfighters, and they ho also have neutron ports. So the communication between Curer and uh, Neutron was successful. And now we have no network policies applied, so everything is permitted. But firstly, we will try to ping all the pods between each other to see whether we really have a network connectivity. And now we will try to land X-Wing on a Death Star application, and uh, it's successful because we have no network policies yet, so we can land any ship. But now we are going to create a network policy which will prevent that. So let's try to do this URL again from TIE Fighter. It was, it's successful, but from X-Wing, it will hang because BPF program is filtering out a traffic 
to, from X-Wing part to the Death Star application. So this is the end of the demo. Uh, I will show you the uh, YAML files definitions of applications. So the Death Star is a service of deployment and TIE Fighter and X-Wing are uh, just normal pods. They have according labels, so organization empire, organization alliance, uh, and the definition of the network policy uh, allows to uh, connect Death Star only if uh, uh, organization label matches empire. So bots without that label cannot connect uh, to Death Star. And uh, the future work we are going to do is to, because in that very simple experiment, uh, um, we didn't uh, touch the topic of load balancing, and uh, we will, uh, of course, after the coupling of our bits of Cilium I mentioned, we will try to implement everything upstream. Uh, that's all what uh, we wanted to show you today. Uh, thank you very much for listening. And uh, yeah, do you have any questions? Yeah? So, hi. So I've seen that the kind of network policy that you're using doesn't look like a default one but rather it's a Cilium network policy. Is that some kind of CRD you are applying yourself, or what's the difference with the default one? Uh, I, it's a CRD. Uh, you can use normal network policies. It will work as well with Cilium, uh, but uh, Cilium also provides a, a CRD uh, with network policies which also support uh, L7 rules because uh, mm, normal network policies in Kubernetes uh, uh, only support L3 and L4 rules, but uh, with extended Cilium uh, CRD, you can also provide rules for L7. Okay. So, and about career, is there any kind of modification you have done, for instance, to the default network policy driver to run this, or how did you implement this? Uh, well, um, I, I didn't use uh, Cure CNI at all. I uh, rewrote everything to uh, Cilium CNI, and um, uh, I used the version of Cura which didn't have network policies at all. Okay. So I used the stable. Okay, then maybe we'll get to speak about that later because we have basically refactored all the network policy support. You, oh, anyway, so we'll talk offline after that. Yes, as far, uh, as, far as I know nowadays, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, Curl has an implementation of network policies based on mapping to um, uh, mapping to security groups in OpenStack. Yeah, we do definitely have that, but we have refactored that, so we are now using CRD especially to minimize the amount of uh, cost to neutron. And I was thinking that maybe we would, well, we could be making that, that popular, but that's a dev, I mean, that's a, uh, Dev session, dev, dev talk that we might be running this offline because I mean, maybe not everyone could be interested. Okay. And also discuss the gate and thing. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea to consider. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Yeah. Okay. Hello. Um, I have one question. You're using pod annotations for transporting basically the neutron information. Is there any security implications, like that if you modify the annotation as a user, that you can like move into other networks or something? Because I'm not sure how I'm seeing this. If, you, if the user is able to edit pod annotations, then yeah, there is a risk. I think so. It's all about setting up uh, airbag and uh, uh, possibility to edit things yeah, to prevent unauthorized users to modify annotations. But I think that's a little problematic because you can't, with airbag, you can't prevent people from modifying annotations and they have to modify the port. I mean, they uh, are the ones creating the port. Yeah, so everyone who, who can modify the port, unfortunately, yeah, he can. 
Thank you. So that's yeah, that, that that's a good question and a good problem to consider in future. Just one question. Um, can we use other neutron plugins along with Cilium as a layer seven policy? Uh, Are you plan to? In that experiment, we were using only uh, OVS plugin. Uh, but of course, when implementing upstream, uh, we'll try to support everything which Curl supports. Thanks. But in th in th that experiment was OVS only. Any other questions? If not, then thank you again for listening to our presentation. Thanks, everybody.